couple of weeks ago, I did a tutorial on the magic of the reduce method of arrays. We're going to solve another JavaScript problem with reduce. This time, I want to identify the location or locations of a particular value in an array. Welcome to another tutorial from All Things JavaScript, where we help bridge the gap between novice and expert. To be notified about new tutorials, make sure to click that bell button and subscribe. Also, check out the discount links to all my courses I've included in the description of this tutorial. For the Udemy courses, I now link to my website so I can update those coupons monthly. If you haven't watched previous tutorials on Reduce, I recommend you do that first in order to understand this tutorial. I will put links to those in the description. Also, we use the spread operator in this solution. So if you're not familiar with that, check out the link in the description. In this tutorial, we are going to use reduce to find the location or locations of a particular value in an array. So if that value is not included, nothing is returned. If it is in the array multiple times, each occurrence is returned. And what will return is the index value, the index position of that value for each place it is in the array. Now, this was a snippet I discovered while reading a Medium post by Fatos Marina. It is a great use of the reduce method, so I wanted to include this as a great way to solve a JavaScript problem, especially since I recently did a tutorial on the magic of reduce. So, let's get into this. Here's the array we're going to be working with. And if you'll notice, there are three fives, there's a couple of sevens, and then there's a lot of numbers that aren't included at all. So we'll test some different scenarios once we get this created. Now here's what we're going to do. I want to create a function that will take an array and a value as a parameter. Now that function will then return an array that contains the index position of that value. If the value is five times, there will be five numbers representing the five index positions of that value. If the value doesn't exist, the returned array will be empty. So that's how we're going to do it. So let's go ahead and get this set up and get started on solving this. So I'm going to set up my function first. I'm going to call it index every since we are getting the index position of every occurrence. And as mentioned, we want to be able to pass in an array and we want to be able to pass in a value. And so here's the two variables that will store the array and the value that we're checking for. So there's the structure of our function. Now, whatever we find or whatever this function determines when looking for the index position of this value, we want to return. So we will return whatever is the result of this. Now we can use the reduce method on the array that's passed in to begin finding all the positions where that value occurs. Now with reduce, we need to pass in a callback function. And that callback function can have multiple parameters. In the tutorial on the magic of reduce, we didn't use multiple parameters much. I'm going to use some additional parameters in this solution. Obviously, we first need the accumulator value. Now, the accumulator value is what's returned after every cycle. And so we use the accumulator value to continue to accumulate the results, what we want to get at the end. So reduce will iterate through that array. And for each value, it'll do something and then return the results to the accumulator. The accumulator will then be used in the next iteration and so on. So that is our first parameter for our callback function. Second parameter is the actual element from the array. As it iterates through every element in that array, it will place it, place the value in the LM variable. And then the third parameter that we want to use is the index position of the element that's passed in. That's how we're going to create an array of index positions for this value. So those are the three parameters that we want to use. 
Now let's go ahead and set up this function. I'm going to use an arrow function. So here's my fat arrow. And the first thing we want to do as we're iterating through this array is check to see if the element that's passed in is equal to the value. So this will contain each element in the array as it iterates through that. And we want to check to see if it's equal to that value that's passed in. If it is equal to that value, we're going to use a ternary operator to do this now. If you're unfamiliar with the ternary operator, I'll include a link to a tutorial on that. And so what we want to return if those are equal to is an array of index positions. Now the first time through, we would simply add the index position where we discovered the match to the array. Well, what if we've already gone through this a few times and we found a few other index positions? Well, those should be included in the accumulator value because each time through we return this array. So if we find it the first time, say we found a seven, we would return a two. And then that would be in the accumulator value. And so we need to include what's ever in the accumulator value in this array that's being returned. So how do we do that? Well, we use the spread operator to spread out the accumulator value in order to include that as a part of this array. Now, what is that accumulator value going to contain the first time through the array? Now, remember in reduce, we get to specify what is in that accumulator value. That accumulator value, first time through, is just simply going to be a blank array. So if nothing ever gets added to it, that's what it returns, is an empty array. All right, now let's finish our ternary operator here. So if this is true, we return an array with the index position plus what was ever in the accumulator. Otherwise, we simply return the accumulator. We don't want to lose anything that we've placed in the accumulator. And so we return it if there is no match so that we retain that. And this is what the accumulator will be when it first starts is an empty array. So there we go. We've got that set up. Now let's go ahead and test this. We're going to set a variable equal to what this function returns and let's pass in the test array and let's try the number five first. So five is included three times, one, two, three times, zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. Okay, so let's see what we get there. Saving that, I'm gonna refresh and open up the console here and then let's take a look at the results, zero, four, and seven. There we go, that worked for us. Now let's pass in a number that we don't have. We don't have a one in there. So let's check that one. And the results has an empty array, which is what we expected. Let's see, let's do two. There's only one of those. So let's try that. Fresh results variable, and that's in position eight. So there we were able to create a function that we can use over and over again to return the index position of a value. If it only exists once, it will return one index position. If, if it exists multiple times, it will return multiple index positions. So we've been able to solve that with reduce. Now, before we're done here, please hit the like button and subscribe. And remember, I've provided discount links to all my courses in the description section. If you'd like to become a patron of this channel, I would appreciate the support. For certain levels of support, you can get access to all the code files I use with my tutorials. You can also contribute by visiting my website, which I would also appreciate. You can follow a link for both in the description. Click the bell button to be notified about new releases. I release a new tutorial each week. And thanks for watching.